Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to follow up on a couple of loose threads that, uh, from questioning of my colleagues, starting with Madame Sinclair De, De I'm going to mispronounce her name, De, De Gagne. She asked you whether or not you're in a position to apologize uh, for the um, mischaracterization of the whistleblower who blew the lid open on this scandal. And I believe your response was simply, that was in the past, I'm part of a new board. So you as representing the board, governing under SDTC, you are not taking a position to apologize uh, for the state of affairs at, at this particular corporation? Is that, is that what I'm hearing? You know, we were brought in to provide strong governance and executive oversight to SDTC. I wasn't in the organization at the time that the this witness number one to, sorry to interrupt, was working. But no that, one, no yeah. one has accepted. No one has accepted responsibility. No one has apologized for this boondoggle that the assistant deputy minister called on a secret tape that this was a sponsorship-like scandal, the likes that this country has not seen since the demise of the Chrétien Martin government. We're talking almost a billion dollars of taxpayer funds that went out the door that should not have. So if you're not prepared to apologize, I'll keep that uh, on record that you're not prepared to do that because you're part of a new board. Now my colleague Mr. Cooper also asked you a question regarding recovery. And I know you have a mandate with respect to recovery. But what I'm hearing is, despite being four months into the job, despite clear evidence from the Ethics Commissioner about violations under the Conflict of Interest Act, with a defined number of money that was improperly dispersed to the former chair, Annette Versheeren, that is evidence. That is conclusive evidence. And I guess what I'm hearing from you is, it's not a priority. It's not a priority for you. It's not a priority for the board, certainly not a priority for this government. So what, what are you saying to taxpayers? Point of order, Mr. Chair. I, just, I, I respect my colleague, Mr. Brock, but he's putting words into the witness' mouth without even providing any evidence to this committee. The witness has answered to me that there are investigations currently going on. So I'm just, I love to follow the evidence, but when we're opining, this is well, where I, I question our, the auditor's, the, the I'll, auditor's I'll, ability on the other side to actually get to the bottom of this and find the well, truth. The, the witness can add, and while you might find the questions, uh, uh, what's, uh, anyhow, uh, Mr. Brock, I've stopped the clock. Um, that is not a point of order. You, you might be irritated with the, the, the style and the question, but it is Mr. Brock's time, and 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 the witness is why don't you stop able, interrupting uh, gentlemen so and question. and the witness uh the witness is, that, proven, is, is here to answer questions mr brock you have the floor again please thank you chair and i apologize ma'am for the interruptions from uh, the liberal bench but they don't like hearing tough questions i want you to address canadians because there are hundreds of thousands of canadians who are following the scandal following my social media posts, my colleagues' social media posts about this scandal. What are you saying to Canadians about your priority in terms of ensuring money is paid back? What is the plan? The plan is to implement the findings of the Auditor General's report of June 2024, and we are well advanced in that work. And, and that every recommendation has been implemented now except one and that is we are now reviewing every single project on an individual basis as per her recommendation and where are there is any are you completely disregarding the findings of the ethics commissioner who made a finding of two violations under the conflict of interest act with a defined amount why is it not a priority for your board working with the ministry to recover those funds from Annette Versheeren. Why aren't you doing that? 
We are we are in a process right now. Doesn't say anything. Process is is government speak for take our word for it. We are going to make this a priority when we get to it. You've had four months to do something about it. This is a priority for Canadians. It's not a priority to continue the funding. The priority is to get the money back, almost a billion dollars of taxpayer funds that is, that's just not being recovered. No process to recover that. That's a real significant problem. Now, you also mentioned that you complied with the disclosure requests from this committee. Who gave you uh, direction from the ministry to supply all the information as requested? We received the direction from the law clerk um, directly to SDPC. And did I, hear, and did I hear directly from you that you complied with each and every request from the law clerk and these documents were unredacted? Yes, you heard that correctly. Okay. And when was it delivered to the law clerk? It, 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 because of the thousands and thousands and thousands of documents that were requested, pretty well every document that's been produced in the organization in the last 20 years, there, it was produced and delivered in tranches. And so every two or three, every two or three weeks, you know, another, you know, 13,000 documents were provided. They were provided over the course of the summer and into, I believe we completed, and I can get you, I just, ha I don't have the dates in front of me, sir, but they, we were, we when, have complied with, last, uh, with the request. Thank you. My last question, when was the last tranche delivered? <laughs> I, I, I'm now just guessing because I didn't. I don't have that just on the top of my head. And there's been. I would say it was in early September. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Durant. I appreciate your patience and I appreciate you swapping the turn. It is noted and thanked by the chair. Uh, up next, Mr. Nader, for five minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, through you, thank you to uh, Ms. Doyle for for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, I want to start start off with a bit of a request. Uh, would you be willing to share with this committee? Uh, copies of the minutes of all board meetings and investment committee meetings uh, for the audit period uh, from March 1st, 2019, uh, right up to today. Is that something you could provide this committee with? Yes, and I, I understand that those have already been provided under the, um, the, pa the, the production of papers request, like all of the minutes, because we're going back now um, to 2017, sir, but... Just to interrupt, um, uh, thank, thank you, but I'm yeah. asking directly to this committee, not... Directly, not directly yes. to this committee. Yeah, or to this committee. commit to do yeah. that within a reasonable time period, which the uh, chair and the clerk could uh, could could work that out. A mm -hmm. um, second thing I wanted to uh, follow up on, uh, it's been mentioned a few times, the non-disclosure agreements, uh, which uh, current and former employees have been required uh, to sign. Uh, is this something that uh, you would be willing to uh, withdraw those NDAs and uh, allow all current and past employees to speak free freely? Is that something you as a board member would be willing to undertake? You know, we have a very specific mandate that's been provided to us as kind of on this transitionary period. So I, I would take that under advisement. I can't make any commitment on that right now. And I I'm not sure that it is appropriate. Some of those NDAs were were entered into because of a particular severance on the departure of employees from SDTC. That's my understanding in the past. So um, I I think opening I would have to open up the whole thing, but I I'm, I can't make that undertaking right now. So uh, I, I will uh, I will leave that point for now, but I do know we have other directors who are coming, and I think this is an issue that uh, you as a board member will have to deal with, and I think it is something that would be in the interest of transparency uh, that those who have been uh, eager to speak but unable to do so because of these NDAs which uh, SDTC have placed on them uh, have been unable to, do, uh, unable to do so. So I will come back to that, um, but I, I think you should be uh, strongly considering that. Um, I want to move on quickly to this... Um, uh, review of the uh, the projects that's being undertaken. In response to a question from Ms. Bradford, uh, you did say that you would provide this committee uh, with that information, but then you made a, a bit of a caveat, um, subject to certain commercial uh, confidentiality. Now, you have mm -hmm. served as a deputy minister of a federal department, so you, I'm sure, are aware 
that committees can request any information um, without limitations. Are, you, you are aware of that, right? Yes, I think I do recall that. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to clarify to um, because you know whenever whenever there, uh, I hear you know stipulations being placed on subject to this, subject mm -hmm, to that, mm -hmm. um, the power of committees to send for documents is without uh, restriction, and so I did want to uh, to clarify that. So we do look forward to receiving that information uh, when it is uh, when it is. Uh, uh, finish now. I've got about a couple minutes left. I want to go back a little bit in time um, because there's an interesting uh, quirk of history. The last time you appeared before this committee um, was dealing with another uh, energy uh, and, and clean energy issue when uh, you were the Deputy Minister of NRCAN dealing with uh, um, a uh, period between 2003 and 2005 when the former Liberal government uh, came under uh, conflict of interest challenges. And that's an uh, ethics commission, or that's an uh, AG report. Uh, it was written that uh, before signing the five contribution agreements, NRCAN knew that a consultant who had provided services to the department relating to the contribution programs would also be working for the organizations that received NRCAN funding under these programs. Mm -hmm. In our view, the AG's view, uh, this is a conflict of interest that NRCAN did not identify. Payments totaling about $3.2 million uh, that NRCAN made under the contribution agreement with CEEA Transport were not in accordance with the terms and conditions of this agreement. Now, granted, you were not the Deputy Minister at the time that that Liberal government uh, was undertaking this program, but you were the Deputy Minister when the, uh, the audit uh, came out. Um, I'm just looking at these two AG reports, looking at these conflicts of interest. You know, why is it, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Doyle, that uh, SDTC uh, was able to uh, operate under such uh, terrible uh, conflict of interest challenges when, uh, when we've, we've seen these challenges happening before with a former Liberal government? Why did this happen once again? Uh, Liberals back in power, going back to their old ways of allowing these conflict of interests uh, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get back into the play of things, money going to friends, going to, uh, to uh, those who are in conflicts and interests. Why did this happen it, from your expert view? Well, let me just say that you've got a very good memory or somebody who's a good researcher, because that is exactly when the last time I was back in front of this, this committee. And at the time it was... Um, you know, I can only say that it was very, it was in the recent, one of the research labs. It was um, an individual in a research lab. It didn't really have any kind of a political affiliation from my, what I can recall. Thank you very much.